Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I love bookstores. <laughs> well, I love all kinds of bookstores. I love browsing around the art section and visiting the old favorites like comics and things that I grew up with. And there's so much to see. There's so many new things out there. And there's also a ton of classics that I had when I was a little kid. There's so many new releases that are inspiring to see, new artwork and new literature for young people and older people alike. It is so much to see at a bookstore. Even these great lectern journals, you can find anything you want at a bookstore pretty much. Uh, they even have art supplies. <laughs> they might be a little expensive, but heck, they still have them. My favorite thing to do is come to the periodical section, the newsstand, because while bookstores are kind of on the way out in our culture, magazines and publications are still big business. And I come here to see all the different kinds from sports and crafts to art magazines, like Andy Warhol's interview is still in publication after all these years. There's so much to see. There's, there's technology and even Star Trek. <laughs> but I come for one magazine in particular, especially when I travel. I come for Mad Magazine. This has been a favorite of mine since I was a little kid, and that's what we're going to explore today. Because if you haven't heard, Mad Magazine is ending its 67-year run. They're ceasing regular publication and only presenting recycled content. So Mad Magazine is basically now dead. So I'm going to grab the newest copies that come out, like this one here. I'm going to grab these when they come out, and I'm going to save these, and I'm going to hold on to them for a while. Because frankly, the artwork is still just amazing in these magazines. It's more heavily digitized nowadays. There's more digital content than ever before. So the traditional feel and the traditional look is not as, uh, as prominent as it used to be. But when I was a kid, Artists like Jack Davis, who have moved on, have been replaced by guys like Tom Richmond, who basically draws the same style as Jack Davis, but it's still just incredibly detailed. And any kid who draws like Jose Giribaldi here, you know, you're going to learn so much from these magazines. That's what happened to me. I would draw Sergio Aragones, I would copy his style, and I would copy the styles of Dave Berg and Duck Edwing. And I would just imitate their styles until I developed my own style. And that's what I loved about Mad Magazine was that it gave me the opportunity to be influenced by other artists. Artists that I didn't know, but that I was seeing in every magazine over and over. One of the big ones was Al Jaffe. He did the back panel. He did tons of stuff, but his big thing was the, uh, the back panel that had this folding page. So he would ha start off with an illustration, and then you would fold the back panel like this. It has these little... Uh, tabs on the bottom, A and B tabs. So you fold them over, and this was absolutely brilliant. And I don't think anyone else had ever done anything like this. So Al Jaffe, this was his signature, you know, piece in every Mad Magazine. So you fold it over, and then there's a question at the top. This one says, uh, what sudden assault wipes out more Americans every year? And uh, you fold it over, and you see this face, and it says, Major Medical Expenses. So there's a joke there. Uh, it's usually a sarcastic joke. Let's talk about why Mad Magazine is important, and why it was important to me right after this coffee break. <laughs> Whenever I fly or take a long trip and I stay over at a hotel or something, I love to pick up a Mad Magazine because not only is it a nostalgic trip for me, but it's also so different from the regular routine of news and all the periodicals that we see every day. And even it's a break from our TVs and our phones and all the electronic stuff. Mad Magazine sends me back to my childhood and they poke fun at everything. Nothing is out of limits and everything is fair game. And that's what I love about Mad Magazine. They can poke fun at Trump. They can poke fun at Obama. They can poke fun at everyone. And they've been doing it for years. I started reading these books years ago and I collect the books. Son of Mad was my first one and I got the other ones later. But I built up a collection of these paperback books uh, that were published years ago, even before I was born. So a lot of the humor in these older books is kind of lost on me because some of it is just generational and I just don't understand World War II humor the way someone who lived at that time. Even the artists themselves had spin-off books of their own that were published by Mad. And uh, the original Mad, the first issue, 
at this time goes for about three thousand dollars in a mint condition. I have no idea what it's going to be now that they're you know ceasing publication. But I just wanted to share with you some of the Mad magazines that I've collected over the years. Unfortunately, I had a huge box of books and magazines that were lost in a flood uh, back a few years ago when my house flooded. Um, here you can see <laughs> my influence on the coffee break there. But yeah, so I lost several magazines, unfortunately, to, um, to a flood. And that was really devastating for me because these magazines, I have held on to these for many, many years. This collection here is, uh, was a different box that didn't get affected, and these were from the 80s. So all my books and magazines from the 70s are now gone, unfortunately. But I still remember them all, and I, I love them fondly. And you can see here that Al Jaffe uh, panel in the back goes all the way back to the 80s. This thing's been around forever. And even... Robin Williams, when he did the movie Popeye, they even poke fun at that. They even poke fun. It's a comic book that makes fun of comic books. <laughs> so nothing is out of the realms of, uh, of being a target for this, uh, this parody magazine. Whether it's politics, whether it's comics, whether it's movies, uh, entertainment, it doesn't matter. They make fun of everything, even genres like horror movies. And this was my favorite issue growing up. I read this over and over and over because one of my favorite artists, Jack Davis, this was his work. And I just studied his work like crazy. And I always wanted to draw like him, but he is an absolute master. His lighting, his, his line work, his shading, it's just phenomenal. Another one is Don Martin, who did this cover here. Uh, his line work was just impeccable. So there was a lot going on in all of these magazines, always something new and fresh and different, and I couldn't wait for each, uh, each new issue to come out on the newsstands. And I would actually, I remember going early, looking for it and seeing the old one there. And uh, I, this one here, I just want to make a note. <laughs> it came with a laugh record. It was really, they would always include little things in their special editions. But uh, yeah, I would go to the newsstand and I would just look through the magazines trying to find the newest issue waiting for it to come out. And they would say, oh no, it's coming out tomorrow <laughs> or something. But so I would just, you know, wait for these issues to come out. And when I got one, I would run home and I had an uncle who loved Mad Magazine as much as I did. So he would take joy in them. And, uh, you know, my brother and I would look at them. They were a big part of our lives, especially for me because the artwork was traditional. They used watercolor, they used pen and ink. And even here you can see this was a 1982 issue and a 1991 issue, and they recycled the same artwork. So what does that mean to someone like me? Well, one of my first jobs was doing the covers for Just Rentals magazine. It was an Apartments for Rent magazine, and I got the opportunity to do the covers for their, their periodical. So I did... Literally, my work showed up on hundreds and hundreds of these magazines. So I did so much work for this this periodical, and it was all inspired. You can see the inspiration from Mad Magazine and the artists there. So that's what the point of this video is, to just pay tribute to these artists and the work they did in a periodical in a magazine that is now going away. So for me personally, thank you so much to everyone involved in Mad Magazine over the years. Thank you for inspiring me to become an artist and to become a better artist. And just for the laughs, if you haven't ever seen Mad Magazine, I recommend just picking one up on the newsstand while you still can and just checking it out. You don't even have to buy it because for someone who's been reading this magazine since he was a kid, I still continue to read it when it comes out and I'm really grateful it existed and I'm really grateful it's still out now. Thank you so much for watching today. Uh, I really appreciate you coming by. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'd love to bring you more content like this in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day. God bless.